Hi everyone and welcome to Miranda Patron Art. I think today we are going to do a lovely little heartstone to share some love. I get my heart molds from the Happy Dining Company and I will post a link with a coupon in the description for that too. But you can see she has great silicone molds that make these sweet little hearts. It's got a flat top so it's easy to paint on, no dripping. See? And it's four inches, about four inches in size. So if you want to do the design today and you don't have the heart, you can always paint a four inch size heart. Alright, so I have my little heart here that I already made and I put felt on the bottom of mine just because that way it protects your stone a little or in whatever you're setting it on. Um, I have patterns in my shop. I think they're actually only in my Etsy shop right now but I'm going to switch them over too but I'll post a link for that if you want the pattern for the felt for the Happy Dotting Company molds. I have felt patterns for all the bottoms. So my heart here I've just painted with a matte black paint and then I took my compass and I put it at the peak here where the heart meets and I did a little half circle just it was only a quarter of an inch diameter and I did it just to hit the tops here of the heart so you're gonna have a V in the middle of your first dot because I'm gonna start my first one here and then I kicked it out to an inch and a half diameter radius, pardon me, diameter would be three inches because it would be the whole length foot. One and a, so it's a one and a half inch radius and I pulled a circle out with that as well on my heart so it should come just to the top here of the two arches of the heart. And that's what I'm going to start off with for my guidelines today. So here I am at my color palettes on Pinterest because I really definitely want some kind of sand and sea type palette but I tend to just head right for the metallics for the sand <laughs> so I am um, trying to challenge myself a little as well. And I also feel like nowadays we just, I want some calming colors. There's just so much coming at us. I just want some kind of tranquility, if that makes sense. So I've been going through trying to find some palette that just kind of jumps out at me for this. Um, something a little more muted like this maybe. I think I'm going to go with, or even this maybe. So that I don't immediately jump to the metallics, even though they are amazing. I just kind of want something subdued and calm for our heart. Alrighty, so I have some of my titanium white here. And that is what I'm going to start with our little center here. All right. So the center is going to be a little bit of a different shape just because we're starting it here at the peak of our heart. So we're just going to kind of cut in as if we kind of chopped this heart out like a cookie cutter out of the, a larger mandala. But really we're just going to make this our mandala. And you can do this um, fill work with dotting tools and then you won't have brush marks or you can use brushes, um, toothpicks, whatever you have on hand just to kind of fill it in here. And it's kind of shaped like a Pac-Man. <laughs> you can see if you remember Pac-Man. I don't know, they probably have it coming out again for vintage. So, All right. 
there's our Pac-Man. Alrighty, now still with the white. We're going to start at the top here. And then we're going to go down to either side down here. And then intersperse it halfway in between those. And then halfway in between those. Okay, now I'm going to take my handy dandy etcher tool here. And let's see. Oh, well, maybe at every other one we'll draw a petal. I think that'll work. So these etcher tools I have on pre-order right now because they're back ordered in my shop, but I'll post a link for those as well. So in between each of the white dots, we'll just kind of draw about a, a little under a half inch petal shape. Skip a dot. A little bit of a half inch petal shape. And these are just some guidelines so we can kind of get an idea for how far out on our design we're going to go. And if you don't feel comfortable just freehanding it, you can make yourself a little petal out of cardstock. And then you could, once this is dry, lay it over the top of each of these to sketch in. And so at the top here, you see my heart ends right here, so my petal is going to end kind of abruptly, but it'll, like I said, it's going to look like we just cut it out like a cookie cutter shape from a larger mandala. Okay, so I have this multi-surface coastal waters, I think is what I will use for my little petals. And I'm just using the smallest dotting tool, but I'm starting in the center of each petal because then I want the dots to get smaller as I work my way around the petal. I just want them the, the fattest on the sides and the center. Do you need something, love? Giuseppe? Mm -hmm. Do you need something? Okay, so continuing on with the coastal waters. And then this one too is the end of our design because we're at the edge of our heart here. And then so you don't have to switch tools. You just keep on going with your same tool and the paint will run off as you go and your dots will get smaller. 
So that was the coastal water. So now I'm going to use the new jadeite green. This is one of the 2020 colors. I mean jadeite glass, pardon me. And above each of the dots here in between, we're going to put two if I can fit. Maybe we'll just do one larger one. That's one thing too when you're creating a design is you want to make sure it's going to fit everywhere you want to put it. So say I want to do a dot of green here, I have to make sure I can do that same size dot all the way around and that'll help with your sizing and the symmetry of your mandalas. So I'm just using the other end here of my yellow. And I want to go a little larger than the yellow creates, so I'm just literally pushing it into a circle. And that was the jadeite. I have to confess I'm looking at my wall of colors here and I'm trying to grab some metallics, but I know I'm not, I said I wouldn't use metallics, so I'm seeing where else I can go for my little own personal challenge here. So I'm going to grab, I think, this battleship. I really like the grays. I don't use them that often, but I do really like gray. Alright, and with our battleship, we are going to do a couple little swipes in here. Just about the tip of our flower petal down into the jadeite. And I had a little too much on that one, so I'm just going to drop that dot off, let it sit for a minute, do this one in, and then go back to it. And that's something you'll learn with time, is just how much paint, how far it's going to go. You can practice on a piece of paper if you're not ready to do it on your piece yet. And you can see these the dotting tools make nice smooth swipes. So you don't have to be worried about switching to a brush. Alright, so now I have some of this lovely Williamsburg blue. And we're gonna do kind of a double tool use here. We're going to do a big dollop up here above the jadeite in between our two swooshes here. Just a hair above so you have enough space. And then we're just going to pull it down to the jadeite here. And actually the other end might be better to use for this kind of like a teardrop shape. But it also allows it to be, I guess, a little 3D because you can put quite a bit down. Which I tend to overdo when I load my tools and paintbrush anyway, but You're just pulling it down into that point.
There you go. Okay, so now we have this teardrop shape in here kind of as a guide. What you're going to do is from the top of our little petal, you're going to add another petal in here, just a wider, larger petal. So you're going to make the peak in the same vein as the teardrop, right in line with the teardrop, and then out as far as the diameter line that we drew earlier, the half inch, a one and a half inch radius line. So from the petal, kind of up and over, up to a point above our teardrop, and then keep in mind with this one, it is the edge of our heart. So this one comes from the edge up to a point, down and around, kind of a fatter petal, wider, up to a point, out and down. And then we have a guide there for another round of petals. All right, so I have another one of the multi-surface, and this one is Blue Mist. It's really a nice blue. Light, light, light. And then I'm gonna go around our little petals here, so we're starting big, like we did with the other petals, big in the center of the petal. And then up to a point right there. So big in the center. Oh, and I just realized I grabbed my brush, but you can still do this with your dotting tools. Just start big ones in the center and then work your way up. I just, sorry. <laughs> the habit of a brush is easier for me because then I don't have to go back and dip as many times. I can do the whole petal with just one dip. But with your tools, you'll be going back and forth a little bit. Mine is actually a little watery, I think maybe because I haven't shaken it up the best or I haven't used it a bit. So right here where those two bled into one another because we have a black background, I can fix that fairly easily. Or if I catch it now before it dries, we can kind of fix that as well. So let me just grab it. See what will fit in there. So I just have a regular flat angled brush here and I'm just gonna kind of swipe away the excess, wipe it on a towel, soak up the excess, wipe it on a towel, dip a little bit of water, and it can kind of just soak up the excess paint that we made a mistake with. But you guys know, I, I hate saying it's a mistake, but my paint was a little thin and they bled together, which really isn't the end of the world, see it's doing that here too. I've been talking about researching just tribes and other 
um, historical art where they actually purposefully put in mistakes because they thought that only God did anything perfectly, which I think is an excellent point. It's kind of humbling, but I uh, also don't like to think of it as mistakes just because you're, you're creating and it's your own fun little piece and however direction, whatever direction it goes in, then it's still yours. You made it. And it's something that's a piece of you that way. So I am going to do the black just because it started to soak in and it's smeared on me. But but that's the good thing too about having the black background or any color background. You can just kind of paint over it and it doesn't ever... You never know what happened. Alright, so we'll grab a little bit more of that here. And then toss a couple blue dots back in there. Fix it. Alright, now I think, well I have the blue here. I'm going to put a large one in our each of our petals here. Okay, now I'm going to grab this pewter. And we'll do a couple swipes in here. Probably start with a large end in and work our way out. <clears throat> Actually, do I want to do a dot in there? Maybe. Mm, let's do. Grab some of that coastal waters again. And we'll do a larger dot just to kind of break it up in here a little. Um, so this would probably be the green one if you have the rainbow styluses. About a three millimeter size dot. I'll show you guys with the tool, not the brush. Alright, so I'm using the pewter and I'm going to use the yellow smaller end here. And we're going to start at the coastal water and follow along our petal line. Oh, it's a little thicker than I thought. This is the pewter. I don't remember if I said that. And follow along the petal line. So the multi surfaces are a little bit thicker. So you can see it runs out a little sooner. I'm just going back with the same tool to grab just that tail a little bit longer. And then just kind of pull it a little bit farther out. And these colors are really, really nice and calming. Much better than I thought it was going to be. And I'm not using my metallics. <laughs> much as I really want to. Alright, that pewter looks nice in there. Alright, so on mine I'm just kind of going to put a little one in here. It's not quite as much space as I have on the other side. So I'm going to switch to my etcher because they're just going to get kind of the top half of my swipe right there. Just to kind of even out the design a little. Ok, 
Okay, we're going to grab that jadeite again. Go with our large green dotting tool. And over each of these, we're going to put a large jadeite dot. Let's see, I, my tool didn't make the size I wanted, so I'm just pushing it around into a circle. There we go. See, and while that is still wet, I'm actually going to steal. <laughs> steal from the wet. And we'll grab the blue mist again. Okay, next I'm going to grab a little baby blue.
Next up I have Slate Blue. I'll do a ring just following the other one. And this one is a little bit stickier because it's a multi-surface. Which you can thin these too, but just be wary if you don't that it's going to be a little stickier. Then I have some Williamsburg blue. And I'm just going to up the size to the other end of my yellow tool. And you can see this one's not far off. It's actually just a shade darker than the slate. Alright, we're going to go with the Jadeite again. Now on the sides, we're going to do it a little bit different just because we aren't fully on the stone at that point. We're just going to work our way on the portion that we can see.
But on this bottom one, we have the full, full range that we can see, so we can do a full range. All right, so we're on the edge, hypothetically here, of our stone. So I'm going to start up here. Same on this side. Do two rings of that. So you can see the difference in size of the dots. Just I have my tools are bent, and just turning it sideways allows more paint to come off and make a larger dot just with the same tool. Okay, now I'm going to grab some Bahama Blue. I think we'll do two rings of that as well.
Okay, I'm going to go with the white. And we're just going to start about a half an inch up and pull it down into our point here. And over here, our design's not all the way finished, so you just see a tad of the white there. And a tad of the white there. Okay, now grab our green dotting tool and the white. And we're going to do a large dot just at the top. And then we're going to grab Okay, so I'm debating doing some, just a swipe or two here, the larger ones, just to fill in the space down here. And then I'd like to go around the edge with white, so I'm thinking we'll go with the dark Williamsburg blue. This way. And go this way. And this one's not quite as far as I want them to go, so I'm just going to do a smaller tip here and just kind of drag them out like that. Okay, now I think I'm going to go and finish the edges off with the white. And you can kind of see here where the top of the heart is. So I'm just going to go just below the rim of the top of the heart here. I'm just using the same size tool so I know that I'll get about the same length of a swipe each time.
I'm going the opposite direction. One, because I wanted the two thicker points here, but also it ends up with the thinner ones in the point of the heart. I spun my little turntable there. Okay. So I'll just pull these in together. Just thicken that one up a little bit. And then we have our fun little calming heart stone. All right. I hope you all enjoyed doing this heart mandala with me. I really enjoy these videos with you guys and I thought I would have a lot more time with being on quarantine, but you know, homeschooling and three kids at home, it makes uh, for a busy, busy time. So, <laughs> but I am super thankful that I get to do these with you when I can. So I hope you are all doing well and staying safe and staying home and doing the things we need to do and caring for each other. I'm so excited to hear from you all so feel free to pop in the comments let me know how you're doing even if it's nothing about the video but obviously feel free to say things about the video and if you are new to my channel and you are looking for all my other videos you can just hit the subscribe button and you'll be able to see them all on the list there. And whenever I put out a new one, if you just hit the bell, then you will get a notification each time that I put out a new video. All right, you guys know I have my website, MirandaPatroneArt.com, and that's your one-stop shop for shopping for art supplies, shopping my art, going to find the color palettes, um, also finding all my YouTube tutorials, uh, basically anything that has to do with my art, you can go from there. All right, take care y'all and we'll see you again soon. Have a great day.